Well, I did it. I made my way from teaching full-time to working in EdTech full-time. I've actually been working full-time in the EdTech world for over six months now. And no, I do not work full-time as a YouTuber. This channel is just something I do on the side for fun. So in this video, I'm gonna go through exactly how I got here from a full-time teacher for over 11 years to a curriculum designer for an EdTech company, what the job is actually like compared to teaching full-time, and any tips in case you are considering a move like this for yourself in the near future or maybe down the road. So like I said, a little over six months ago, I was still in the classroom teaching full time with no real intention of wanting to leave anytime soon. Unlike a lot of other teachers, I wasn't burnt out of the career. I still really enjoyed doing what I did and I worked in a pretty safe and welcoming place. Even though I was itching to use my passion and my background in educational technology, I wasn't sure if I was ready to leave the students. I was casually browsing job boards as I was waiting for my computer to update one day and I found a job that really matched my skill set and my interests and passions. I wasn't really sure if I should apply, but since I had to wait around anyway for my computer to update, I went ahead, wrote a quick application application, updated my cover letter, and sent it out into the world. Surprisingly, it all worked out perfectly, and now here I am, out of the classroom. I do genuinely love teaching, and it's something that I do feel was a calling of mine. I decided I wanted to be a teacher during my undergraduate program when I was studying biology, and I got a really neat degree where I could major in biology, but also get my teaching certification all during my undergraduate time as a student at UNC Chapel Hill. This was an amazing opportunity because for a lot of people, they have to go back and get a master's degree in order to take care of their educational certification requirements. But right out of college, I was certified to teach. I did student teaching in my last semester of college, and then I worked abroad in the Peace Corps for two years as a science teacher. That is a whole other video, and I can share my experiences there later. Long story short, I went from a place that had virtually no technology at all, really just chalkboards and no electricity or running water, to the school I got hired at, which was one-to-one, -one, meaning every student had a laptop, virtually paperless, meaning all their assignments were on the computer, and they were operating in a flipped classroom model where we assigned videos for homework for students to watch every night, and then instead of lecturing, that opened up more space for labs and hands-on experiences in the classroom. Needless to say, I loved it, especially the making videos part, and I was so lucky to be a part of a school that was really cutting edge with regards to the innovative practices that it was doing. It was from that school that I developed my love for educational technology and the potential that it had. I was able to share that passion, doing a lot of speaking events, conferences, professional development for other teachers, continuing to build my own library of science videos. I taught in New York City for a little bit, doing the flip classroom model there, and then returned to North Carolina to continue teaching. By the time I'd been teaching for about seven years and I'd been sharing a lot of the educational technology practices that I was doing in my classroom, I decided it was time to look for opportunities to grow and maybe potentially become a leader in schools, maybe coaching other teachers on instructional technology or developing models and resources for other teachers to use. I was lucky enough to live close by to a really amazing innovative graduate program in educational innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship called the MIGHTY program for short. Wow at UNC Chapel Hill. I applied, was accepted, and was able to enroll part-time while I continued to teach full-time at the high school where I worked. This experience was a game changer for me and it opened up a whole new world of both theoretical knowledge about educational technology and practical experience. Not only did I get to learn about the theories and research behind learning and innovation, but I also got great experience through some of the real-world projects that I did with my graduate school groups, my thesis project where I developed a business model for a potential startup that I could begin, and my internship that I did in that grad program where I got to be an intern for a very small ed tech startup. All of these experiences really made me even more passionate about educational technology. I was able to grow my YouTube channel during this time, and I continue to look for ways to share and involve more people in ed tech at my school. Fast forward through the pandemic, even though I had graduated from my program and had all of these new skills and opportunities that were fresh on the brain, I wasn't quite ready to leave the classroom yet. The pandemic was still in full swing and I wanted to try to use all the best practices that I had learned about and help other teachers while I continued to stay in the classroom and teach remotely in the 2020-2021 school year. And so I did. Fast forward to the following school year where I started to peek at more and more job opportunities just in case there was something that came my way that really matched my passions and interests. And lo and behold, something did come along and I became a science curriculum designer for an innovative ed tech company where I get to write and help produce educational science videos for students across the United States and the globe. 
It's by far way more professional than anything I make and put out on my YouTube channel. And so I get to use my passion for video and ed tech all in one place, making high quality resources, being creative and collaborating with amazing teams every single day. So yes, my job is remote. So I am working from home in this office every single day. I got my own materials like my laptop and keyboard and second monitor from my company. It's way more flexible than teaching. For someone who's coming from education, I'm still getting used to the fact that I can go to the bathroom whenever I want. I can take lunch breaks that are longer than 20 minutes. There's not a million crises happening all at once that I have to take care of. And the work hours are set as work hours. I'm not answering student emails late at night or planning for the next day and grading papers, which is a total mind shift for a lot of us coming from education. All of those are huge pros to the job, but knowing that I'm doing something that reaches thousands of students and I'm also creating really high quality materials is the thing that's truly satisfying about the job. If I wasn't doing something that I loved, I probably wouldn't like it as much, even with all the perks. It was really hard for me to leave the classroom. I loved my students, I loved interacting with them every single day, and I loved getting the immediate feedback of a lesson that went well or that didn't go well, and being able to change things day to day or even from period to period to make it better. I did work in a really wonderful school, so I had a lot of support from my administration and other teachers. But I'm happy to say at my current company, I also feel very supported by my managers and everyone that I work with. EdTech is fast paced, and just like education, you have to be able to think creatively and be on your toes a lot of the time. One of the things that a lot of people have to get used to leaving the classroom is getting feedback from other adults on a daily basis on the work that you do. Teaching is very private, and doing something in your classroom every day and getting feedback from students is a whole lot different from doing something in the professional context and getting feedback from your peers who are seeing the work that you do day by day. Of course, you get observed as a teacher every once in a while. It's definitely not to the same degree of something in the ed tech world. Personally, I love that environment of getting feedback, sharing my work with others, being able to make it better, but I know it is challenging for some people to make that shift. It's also fun to work with adults every day, even though, yes, I do miss my conversations and the interactions that I had with my high schoolers. I was very fortunate and privileged to be able to attend my graduate school program, gain the experiences that I did, but I know not everyone is in a place to be able to do that, whether or not you have the time or the money or access to a program to get the experience you need to get into ed tech. So my last part of this video, I'm gonna talk about tips for people who are interested in going into ed tech from education if you are interested in pursuing a path like that. Like I said before, no, you do not need to go to a graduate program, spend thousands of dollars just to get a degree that says you can be a learning designer or a user researcher, but you do need to become familiar with the ed tech space. Take a look at the companies that you love to use in your classroom. See what's out there, see what their competitors are and see how they're growing. A lot of these companies are small, but fast moving and growing quickly. So there are a lot of opportunities within the ed tech space. Others have been around for a much longer time, but they're much more corporate and they may have different working environments than what you expect. Even if you're just curious about what the ed tech space is like, go ahead and peek at job descriptions now for companies that you might have heard of or look on EdSurge or LinkedIn to see job board listings for ed tech jobs. Take a look at job titles. This is big. Knowing what to search for at companies is gonna be key in starting your search for ed tech jobs. Then look at the skills and experiences that they have listed. Even if you don't quite have the exact experience that matches a role, you can always leverage experiences you've had in the classroom and show how they're applicable to the ed tech space. Skill-wise, you can work on contract work, helping out at a higher level, maybe at the district or a school group or even a teacher group to coach, share, develop curriculum materials, but make sure you have experiences behind you that you can talk about when you get to the interview stage or even in the cover letter or application stage. Not only did I draw from my experiences in grad school, but I was able to talk about a lot of things that I did within my own school, especially with regards to developing video when I was applying for the job that I got. Even though as a professional working adult, don't be afraid to intern or to just get in the space if it's something that you can squeeze into your schedule. A lot of people are open to remote work these days, and so I was able to intern remotely for a small ed tech startup and gain a lot of really valuable industry knowledge that way. Some people will tell you to create an online portfolio where you can showcase resources that you've developed or projects that you worked on before. And I would say definitely do this if you have things to add to it, but don't spend lots of time in building a fancy or beautiful website if it's just gonna be fancy and beautiful and not have much substance to it. That is a time suck, but doing activities that are gonna add value to your resume and give you extra experiences that you don't already have is not a waste of time. Start networking with people you know. My area has local ed tech meetups that are great places to network and talk to people. You can reach out via LinkedIn, but if you're not talking to the right people, that also may be a waste of your time. So make sure you're reaching out to the right people at companies if you're trying to get a leg up by connecting with them. 
And lastly, if you are interested in going into ed tech, make sure you evaluate exactly why you want to do it and find something that you are truly passionate about. It really helped me shine in interviews when I was talking about something that I loved, which is designing really high quality educational video materials for students to access across the globe. I could talk for days about creating video for educational purposes and that's what I did over the several days of my interviews. <laughs> if you find something that's a perfect match for your skills and your passions, good luck to you and don't hesitate to apply even if you feel like you don't have all the qualifications. It is a tough world out there, especially with lots of teachers trying to leave or leaving the classroom because of the state of education right now. I'm not urging teachers to go. In fact, if you wanna stay, please do stay in the classroom. But if you are interested and passionate about ed tech, there are ways for you to break into it. And don't be afraid of trying certain roles that you might not have seen yourself in before. Nearly everyone that I work with at my company is a former teacher or has some sort of educational experience. So there are a lot of places and potential for you to grow if that is the path that you wanna follow. What questions do you have about going from education to ed tech? Do you wanna know more advice about applying to ed tech jobs or things that I found helpful? Helpful transitioning from teaching to the ed tech world? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.